Welcome to day two of IGN's live coverage from Gamescom, coming to you from Cologne, Germany. I'm your host, Damon Hatfield. Let's get things started off with Skylander's Trap Team. Lou here is going to give us an update. Lou, welcome to the show. Thank you. Now, Trap Team is about a prison break. Is That's that right? That's right. Yeah, yeah. So, Chaos, our series villain, has actually broken out the most wanted villains in all of Skylands from Cloudcracker Prison. He destroys it, freeing all these villains, allowing them to roam free throughout the world, and it's up to you, your Skylanders. Yeah, it's just you. I, can, I, think, I, I think I'm up you to the challenge. You got I, can do it. Yeah. I don't know, man. It's tough. Let's see. The Skylanders, our new Trap Masters, the Minis, these guys, which we're showing off for the very first time, mm -hmm. playable characters, and it's up to you guys to track them down and actually capture these villains. All right, so you're showing off a new level here today, is that right? Yeah, so we're showing off a brand new level. It's called the Rainfish Riviera. And what we're actually showing is a brand new class of playable characters, the minis. So we introduced in Skylanders Fire's Adventure and Skylanders Giants a promotional item called Sidekicks, which were little pets that followed you around. And they were based off smaller versions of the Skylanders. And they were so popular that we actually gave them a full upgrade and made them completely playable characters this year. And so they're, they're smaller, they're cuter, but they actually have the same amount of strength as their larger counterparts. Mm -hmm. So Mini Genie here is actually based on a giant that we introduced in Skylar's Giants. And so despite her diminutive size, she actually has the power of a giant. And so right here we're taking on a most wanted villain. You can kind of tell by the health bar on screen. You can tell by the, the column of light surrounding him. This is Brawlris. And this is a character that we're going to be able to trap if I'm not too terrible at it. Yeah, that's one of the key features. You you can trap the enemies and bring them over to your side, right? Exactly. So the idea behind the game is that you're capturing evil and you're unleashing them is good. Let me get this defeating blow here. And so once I defeat him, you'll see he's covered in a, uh, an electric cage kind of thing. And there's a symbol around the screen. So that's a tech symbol telling us that if we had a tech trap, which I do, and these traps are actually chunks of that Cloudcracker prison that were blown up and actually came to Earth. And so now you're using that and it's Traptanium power to capture these guys. So you put this in the portal and you'll then be able to capture them. And so one of the things you're not seeing here is that we actually have a really unique audio visual experience where the audio of the character, you'll hear them get sucked out of the game and then into your living room. And he's actually talking out of the portal right now. So it's a new portal that comes with Traptanium. Exactly, it's the Traptanium portal but the thing that's really unique about it is you hear the character talk out of the trap. And so it really makes you feel that magic that you pulled them from the game into your living room. And instead of just bringing a toy to life like you did in Skylanders Past, you're actually giving life to a toy. And so that character is now written into that toy for you to take to your friend's house or wherever you go. So in this case, is it in Mini Ginny? No, it's in the trap. Here. Oh, just okay. And so I can take that trap out gotcha. and use it at any time. But what's really neat is that you can tag team instantly between these characters. Cool. Setting up kind of a combination style of gameplay. And the villains themselves have timers instead of health bars. And so it becomes kind of a unique cooperative experience where, see, I can shoot off that starfish from Brawlrus's cannon. It continues to go, and I can use then mini genie yeah. to continue to fight with him. And so you're actually building out what we call your trap team. Mm. And so I have another one here, another pirate walrus, or actually this is, I believe, Maskermind. Oh no, we haven't captured him yet. But what's cool is that you can actually continue to collect and continue to find these characters, building out your own team and creating your own kind of combination gameplay. But what's really special for us is that we have just a mass amount of characters. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Excuse me. We fully support every single character we've ever released in the game, mm. in all modes. And what's really great is that you can capture, trap, and play with all of the characters. And so whether you're Mini Genie here, you know, a Mini, or you're playing as a Giant, I'm gonna skip some dialogue here, or you're even playing as one of your characters from Skylander Spyro's Adventure, I'm actually gonna bring in a Mini version of Spyro here, this is Spry. All fired up. But even if you're playing as your collection, you can be tag teaming back and forth with the villains, regardless of who you're playing. As. I see. Yeah. 
And how many villains can you capture? Like have captured at a time? All of them? So the way that it works is that there's over 40 of them in the game. And to capture a villain, you simply defeat them, and they go into your villain vault. Mm -hmm. But if you have a trap, you can, then that, that, you can then actually play as them. Okay. And so if you have the trap, you put it in there, you equip that villain in the trap. It's elementally aligned like our Skylanders are, so if Spry here is magic, so is Ninjini. Um, but if you're you know, capturing, say, Brawl Risk, you would need a tech trap to utilize him. Okay. It's, not, it's, it's one character per trap at a time, okay. but you can switch out who's in there in between levels. I see. So that villain vault is kind of like your collection, you know, where you can go in between levels in the hub in our Skylanders Academy and continue to choose who you want for that level. I see. Yeah. So tech traps sold separately? Like do you have to find these different traps? So with the, the starter own? yeah, with the starter pack you're actually gonna get two Skylanders, Skylanders uh, a new trap master, which is our new guest star for the year. Big characters with these really cool Traptanium weapons. You're gonna get a core Skylander called Food Fight who shoots tomatoes. And you're going to get two traps, a life and a water trap. I see. And so right out of the box, we're giving you two traps, which allow you to capture and play as, I think, about ten villains, which is really the most character content we've ever given in a starter pack. Mm -hmm. And then you can buy the traps individually you know, in the store. Sure. They're not blind packs. You're going to choose who you want. You know, If I want a magic character, I've in, you know, encountered a number of magic villains that I'd like to play as. You can then go to a store and for a low price, you know, get a trap to then play as those characters. But you're not ever needing it to progress in the game or to ever, you know, get those characters in your villain ball. Cool. And so we're hopping in here. We're also showing off a, a brand new card game that we have in the game called Skystone Smash. And so we continue to try and figure out ways for the game to be more involving for kids and not just, you know, based on combat. We like having a good mix of things. And so this is a, a brand new card game that we're doing. And what you have is your cards on the left side, the enemy's cards on the right side, and it's up to us to get his health down to zero. Now we've purposely kept the health on the character cards under the number five so that kids can actually do the subtraction, the math and stuff themselves. And so it's just based Tricking them into doing homework. Exactly, exactly. Who says games aren't good for you? I know, right? <laughs> and so, you know, we have different spells on the different cards, different effects. And it's, it's a lot more advanced than anything we've done before because you're actually able to customize your own deck throughout the experience. So as you trap villains, as you do other things in the game, you're actually collecting these cards, creating your own deck, and you can play throughout the experience, either on the actual main path of the game or actually hidden throughout the game. And so here you'll see we have the chef taking on his brawl and chain there. They defeat each other, but he's unguarded against my mastermind and my gulper, allowing me to, to defeat him. Nicely done. Progress forward, yeah. Then you earn money. Exactly. So, you know, the way the game works is that our Skylanders all have brains. And so as you play through the game, if you collect loot, if you get experience points and level up, it's actually stored on the toy itself and allows you to go wherever you play. You know, so if you're playing on the PS4, you know, or you're playing on the X360 or the Xbox One, any of our consoles, your characters work across console. I see. And take their experience, their upgrades, and even their customization items, because you can actually have them, you know, wearing hats, different things. Sure. It'll take it with them. And so here we have another bunch of villains ambushing us. And if I can defeat this turtle, he's got a lot of health with a magical set of bombs here. How do you know if it's an enemy you can capture? So you'll actually see a presentation like this. You'll see a column of light highlighting them. You'll see an effect on screen. And most importantly, a wanted poster. Gotcha. And so this is Maskermind. And so what Maskermind has is this magical mask which allows him to bring back defeated enemies and hide within them. And so by defeating the turtle, he's now free. He's kind of a mage type character. And so now we want to chase him down, defeat him, and capture him. Now, if we don't have a trap at the time, what's great is that even by defeating him, you send them back to the villain vault and you get a bounty for defeating them, which goes to your character, allowing you to get more upgrades. I think you got him. I know. It's tough. He's fast. All right, I got him. There we go. So I'm going to put an Master undead trap in, because I know what this guy it. is. Hey, you're not supposed to use magic against trapping me. sequence here. Oh, I heard it. Yeah. There you go. Hey. 
and uh, it's just one of those things where it really comes to life in your living room. You can actually hear it talk to you. We have it also do this, you know, Mastermind transition. You hear them go ah, from the game to the living room, but they also talk throughout the experience. And like so as you, while you're playing, and while you're playing, and so if they haven't been played with in a while, or if you're entering in a puzzle, or you know you're passing a certain NPC character, we have I think over 175 to 200 written lines and you know voiceover recordings for every single one of the characters. Oh wow! And so you know any thoughts of it being repetitive? It it's not. We yeah. have a lot of voiceover in the game, really making each of these characters distinct. And with over 40, you know, unique villains, there's just a lot of unique stuff to hear, and a lot of incentive to replay because there's a lot of great humor in the game, and it's really, really funny. Sounds like you've got a lot of content. In here. We have a ton of content. Yeah, and it's it's one of those things where the way we see kids play is constantly replaying the title. Mm -hmm. You know, they're not just playing the levels A to B to C, what they're doing is actually going back, perfecting the level, finding all the collectibles. And so each year we're putting in more and more things hidden in there for them to find, incentivizing that replay that they're already doing. Sure. Kind of giving them new experiences. So hidden characters to play Skystones with. We have a new thing called Villain Quests, where if you have, say, a certain villain character and you're going through the game, you might actually find a quest giver for that villain that you're not going to find until later in the game. So you want to go back with that specific character, talk to that quest giver, and you'll actually get a new mini game area to play specifically for that villain. Mm, cool. Yeah. Uh, what's next for us here in the in the game? Yeah. So what we're doing in this level is actually trying to help Mags, who is the inventor of Skylands Academy, find her information squid. And so we're in this weird rainfish area where this giant rainfish has eaten her information squid. So we're trying to progress through this pirate village and figure out a way to actually get to the information squid. And so we're actually going to be going through, defeating a number of enemies, and trying to get to this crane where we're able to then capture the, uh, the, the rainfish. And so here, this is actually a great place to show this. I'm gonna take this guy out. But so I have Mastermind captured, right? Mm -hmm. Mastermind's ability is the ability to turn one of the villains against the other. And so you see, nice. by using his ability, that an enemy pirate is taking out the other one. And they'll fight each other. And it's only a temporary attack, unlike trapping a villain. But each of these villains you know, has a different type of ability, which we've designed to make sure that they, you know, work cooperatively, you know, with your Skylander or in co-op. Sure. You know, so we've got different characters that can do different things, like we have a, a, a troll with a freeze ray who has the ability to freeze enemies. So you can imagine then switching to your Skylander after you've frozen an enemy and shattering them. Right. Or we have some characters that are great for co-op. We've got a character who's a life mage who can cast a, a healing spell on the ground. And so you can imagine in co-op, in dire straits, put that healing, you know, glyph on the ground, and heal your co-op partner. And so, with over 40 of these, you know, 40 of these villains, we've actually taken a look at, you know, what cooperative play experiences would kids want to see, mm -hmm. and want to then work in with their characters. So we have unlocked a gate here. Yeah. So we actually, sorry, sorry. Right. We have a lot of kind of meta humor in the game for you know parents and and older parents, and that's actually one of my favorite situations where when you initially get to this gate, Mags there calls this a classic case of gate in the way. And so you have to find the switch. So we play up a lot of things like that. We actually had a character, I think that we've shown off a little bit earlier, called the Chompy Mage, who calls out the fact that in a boss fight, he realizes that uh, he's only been making it slightly incrementally harder in between waves, right? and that he needs to step his game up. And so for gamers, you know, for kids, sure. While we're, you know, focusing on kids, we actually, you know, do a lot of work to make sure that it's a family game. It's not just a kids game, which is why we have a lot of great humor, we have a lot of great content, we have a ton of stuff to do, but we build the game to kind of grow with you. And so if you're a, a, a more expert gamer, we have a hard mode, and then once you beat it, an unlockable nightmare mode, which I would actually challenge any adult to show me that they can beat. Yeah. 
It's not easy. What do you do? You just turn up the we, enemy, we turn enemy up health damage. Enemy health damage, attack strength. You know their their hit points. Um, but we also uh, reworked the boss fights as well, so that way you know say if a, a like the Chompy Mage he does a a slam which results in a shock wave, right? On Nightmare, there's four of them. I see. And then so each area ends up looking almost like an Ikaruga type situation <laughs> where you're actually getting multiple, you know, rings of things and you're actually, you know, having to evade situations like that. So Props for the Ikaruga reference, by the way. <laughs> do, you, do you find a lot of yeah. gamer parents play with their kids? Play yes. with their kids? Yeah, I mean, one of the things that we've actually heard time and time again is because we've We've built this game as elegantly as we can, you know, within all of the, the things that you can do with this system, as far as how you can do co-op and how you can play together and having these toys. So at any time, if we wanted to do co-op, all you do is put a second toy on the portal, plug in a second controller and press a button. Mm -hmm. And instantly you're playing co-op. It's all on the same screen. But then if you want to leave, you take your character off, press the back button, and that second player is out. Mm -hmm. And so what we've seen is that parents you know, if there's a, a sequence that kids want their parents to join in on, maybe a puzzle they don't understand, yeah. or things like that, parents can easily join in, instantly play with their kids, but then if something comes up, you know, like having I, a, a I need phone to check call, on the casserole. Yeah, exactly. I need to check on the casserole. They can easily hop out of the game. The kids aren't having to sit there and wait. They're not having to reload a level. They're not having to do anything like that. It's instant. It's quick. It's seamless. It allows parents, kids, friends, and kids, you know, or parents themselves to play through the game at any time. I see. Yeah. What is Ice Maul's ability? So Ice Maul, he's actually based on our, our previous giant Eye Brawl, and so he's got these really great fists which he punches with, but the best is that he can actually okay. leave nice. his body and be a floating head with a laser eye. And so one of the things that kind of affords us you know, a lot of creativity are the different elements, right? So he's an undead type character, kind of a little bit spookier. Yeah. Uh, you know, a little more kind of classically, you know, horror themed in a way. But then we can go to magic, which are more, you know, dragons and genies or tech characters that use, you know, robotics, things like that. So we're actually able to create, even among, you know, just the minis, a, a huge variety of types of characters that we see people attached to. You know, so we're not trying to limit this to you know, a specific group. We're trying to make this as inclusive as possible. Sure. You know, we've got male characters, female characters. We've got, you know, horses, dragons, humanoids, eyeball monsters. Dogs and know. cats living together. Exactly. You know, and really having that all inclusivity is really, you know, what has kind of generated a fan base. There's always a character that you would like. Hmm. You know, be it a mini, a giant, a trap master, a core character. We're trying to continue to create you know, unique characters, all of which play completely and differently from each other, that kids can latch on to, parents can find good ones, and you know, we see a lot of uh, you know, adult gamers enjoying the game as well. Now, before we go, I want you to show me this, uh, this other version of the yes. game that you've got. Yes. Pretty impressive. So for the first time ever, you know, for any, any AAA game, we're actually releasing day and date on the tablet. And so at actual console level graphics, we've created the entire game. It is not a mini game, it is not a side game, it is not you know a smaller version of the game. It is the entire game. And what we're releasing is a starter pack with its own portal and controller that we've actually built Here, let's for... Let's see the control, yeah, you, then you, you pull the up the, the iPad there. Yeah, absolutely. So what's really neat is that we've got this tablet here. You can see we're using an iPad Air here. But we've got this portal that has an integrated stand. I actually turn it off. So this is what's really cool is that by pressing the power button in the center. The center, oh, this guy? The center okay. of it, you hold it down. Okay. And instantly, you're in control. So press B. So unlike having to pair with other devices. I'm playing the game. Exactly. But now if you hold the power button again to turn it off, what we're doing is then instantly transitioning to touch controls. Oh, you're still on. Oh, wow. Yeah. So what we're doing is trying to make sure that we are always in a situation I'm still, uh, there we go, yeah. yeah. And now I'm instantly playing with touch controls. Wow. So what we've done is we've looked at where kids are playing. Mm, sure. We see a lot of kids playing with tablet. Of course. And so what we've done is we've actually created this kind of transformative experience where you're taking your tablet, you're turning it into a full-blown console setup. You get the entire game, you get you know the portal, the toys, the controller. It feels like you're playing on TV. And what's great is you can take it wherever you go without having 
to you know worry about your parents or your grandparents having an Xbox, sure. or PS3, things like that. But then what's great is that we wanted to make it seamless. So at any time, you can turn off the controller, transition to touchpad, say you want to take it on a train or a plane. Mm -hmm. If you don't want the portal, you can turn off the portal as well. And then we instantly have two what we call instant characters, which only live on the tablet itself, mm -hmm. allowing you to progress through the story. So any combination of having the controller, having the portal, and having the tablet will work together. So we're using you know, the console setup, we're using a handheld setup, we're using any variation in between to be able to allow kids to go where they want to play the game. It's pretty impressive. Yeah. I can see uh, parents being thankful to have this on a plane. Yes. Here you go, kid. Exactly. I'll see you in Toronto, wherever you're going. <laughs> it's also kind of kid size, the controller. Exactly, yeah. Smaller. So we, we made sure that we, we designed it ourselves. Yeah, it's not, you know, a, a, a third party peripheral. <laughs> this is entirely made by us. And one of the things that's really neat about it is that it actually houses itself in the portal itself, make it easy oh, perfect. for travel. When is Skylanders Trap Team out? So we're out uh, October 5th in the United States, October 10th in Europe, mm. uh, and October 2nd in Australia. Pretty much every console, tablets, and even the Wii, the original Wii. Yes. Which Wii. comes with a voucher for the Wii U version? Correct. Right? Yeah, we actually are, are supporting a, a seamless upgrade. Yep. And so if you have the Wii version of the game, the portal itself is actually the same for the Wii U. And so with that starter kit for the Wii, you actually get a voucher so that if you end up going and buying a Wii U, you can download your copy of the game, take your portal, your toys, everything you bought for the Wii, plug it into the Wii U, and you're good to go. It's a Very seamless cool. upgrade. Lou, thanks for taking the time. Yeah, thanks for having me. Skylanders Trap Team. Yep. Stay tuned. So much more to come on day two of IGN's live coverage of Gamescom, presented by Dead Island 2, right after these messages.